Hey everybody, welcome back. We're reading the Tafsir. We're on page 39. It's talking about Surah Al-Baqarah. Let's start. And before we start, A'udhu Billah Minna Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahirrahmanirrahim We will turn their hearts and eyes away from the truth since they refused to believe in it the first time. Al-Anam 6110 the kind of hypocrisy and belief that puts one beyond the pale of Islam is that which Allah ascribed to the hypocrites in this surah and elsewhere. Hypocrisy did not exist before the migration of the messenger, peace be with him, from Mecca to Medina. After he migrated in the battle of Badr, Allah caused the believers to prevail and made them victorious, and those people in Medina who had not become Muslim were humiliated. For that reason, some of them pretended to become Muslim, out of fear and by way of deceit, in order to protect themselves and their wealth. So they lived among the Muslims, pretending to be of their number, when in reality, they were not Muslims. Because I think, like, being a Muslim is like in your inner soul, it's not just, uh, like as the author wrote, lip service, right? By his kindness towards the believers, Allah described the characteristics of the hypocrites, by which they might be recognized so that the believers would not be deceived by them, and so that the hypocrites themselves might not be discouraged from committing many of their evil actions. Allah, glory be to him, said, The hypocrites are afraid, lest a surah be sent down concerning them. A uh, Tawbah 964 In this passage, Allah described them in terms of the essence of hypocrisy. Among people, there are some who say, we believe in Allah in the last day, but in fact, they are not believers. They paid lip service to that which was not in their hearts, so Allah showed them to be liars by saying, But in fact, they are not believers, because true faith is that which is confirmed in the heart and on the lips. Exactly, it has to be confirmed in your heart. You cannot just do it by peer pressure or wanting wealth. Theirs was an attempt to deceive Allah and his believing slaves. Deceit means pretending one thing whilst concealing something else so that the deceiver might get what he wants from the one whom he is deceiving. Exactly. These hypocrites were behaving in this manner with Allah and his slaves, but their deceit backfired on them. This is a kind of miracle or wonder because the deceiver usually either gets what he wants or he remains safe without gaining or losing anything. But in this case, the deceit of the hypocrites backfired on them. It was as if they did what they did of plotting and scheming in order to harm and doom themselves. Because Allah, glory be to him, is not harmed by their deceit at all, and neither are his believing slaves. Maybe the people who believed were not harmed because they were able to see the hypocrisy, but maybe those who I'd say who were not as aware could have been harmed. The believers are not harmed if the hypocrites pretend to believe in order to protect their wealth and lives because their plotting will eventually backfire on them. Ah, that is so weird. I literally just thought that and then he gives a counterpoint to it. That is pretty cool. I mean, yeah, it backfires on them, right? But in the moment, there's a harm, right? A temporary harm, one could argue which will result in disgrace and scandal in this world, as well as ongoing regret because of what the believers achieve of power and victory. But somebody could say some believers don't achieve anything and they still live in squalor, while somebody in this world could achieve worldly gains immediately. So they might not regret, right? They might not get a scandal, some of them. Or at least some people might not be made scandalized publicly. Then in the hereafter, they will have a painful and devastating punishment because of their lies, disbelief, and evil doing. But in their ignorance and foolishness, they will not realize that. In their hearts is a disease. What is meant by disease here is the disease of doubt, confusion, and hypocrisy. Doubt, confusion, and hypocrisy. The heart is vulnerable to two spiritual diseases that make it unhealthy and unbalanced. 
the disease of false doubts, and the disease of desires. Okay, so we've got two diseases here, spiritual diseases. And the diseases of desires that may lead to destruction. Disbelief, hypocrisy, doubt, and innovation are all spiritual diseases that result from doubts and confusion. Xena, illicit sexual activity. Oh, that's that word. And the inclination towards immoral actions and sin result from the disease of desires. As Allah, glory be to him, says, Lest one in whose heart is a disease should be moved with desire. Al-Asab 3332 This has to do with the desire for zina, fornication, or adultery. What's a very powerful desire? The one who is truly safe is the one who is protected from these two diseases. How do you become protected though? It's so hard. For he will have certainty and faith and will be patient in refraining from all sins. You can be patient though, but the magnetism that some people radiate, it just feels like a moth to the flame. Oh, I've only ever met one person Two others who come to mind who probably have that magnetism. But one person in particular who I met once in person had this energy that was like, whoa, this is like this person feels like they're pulling me. I gotta move to the other side of the library. In their hearts is a disease, and Allah has increased their disease. Ooh. You should be asking for it to be decreased, right, family? Whew. To have it increased would be to be fall more into a pit. To fall more into a harder hole to climb out of, right? This verse, which speaks of the hypocrites, highlights Allah's wisdom. In decreeing sin for the sinners because of their previous sins, He causes them to commit further sins that will incur His punishment. As He says elsewhere, He causes them... Allah causes them to commit further sins that leads to them having a bigger punishment. So I guess it's really up to the person to really recognize what's happening and to try to fix it then, essentially. We will turn their hearts and eyes away from the truth since they refused to believe in it the first time. al 6, 110. So when they chose to deviate from truth, Allah caused their hearts to deviate from right guidance. Asaf 61.5. Oof, this, I mean, he's making his point clear, isn't he? As for those in whose hearts is a disease, it will add doubt to their doubt. Out Tawbah 9, 125. So the punishment for sin is more sin, just as the reward for good deeds is more good deeds. So this is, this is interesting because sin is more sin. So some, let's say you have a really hedonistic atheist, and they say, well good, I like committing sin of fornication. You give me more women to sleep with, you're helping me, not hurting me, they would contend. Even though people who are on a more spiritual path would say, well actually, it's not really a help. It's a temporary satisfaction with uh, lingering damage results, mentally. Allah, glory be to him, says, Allah increases in guidance those who are guided. Maryam 1976 When it is said to them, Do not make mischief in the land. They say, We only want to put things right. Indeed, they are the ones who make mischief, but they do not realize. When these hypocrites are told not to make mischief in the land, which means committing sins and deeds based on disbelief, including disclosing the secrets of the believers to their enemies and taking the disbelievers as close friends, making mischief in the land, committing sins, huh? Deeds based on disbelief, disclosing secrets. Interesting. They say, we only want to put things right. Thus they both strive to cause mischief in the land and defend their actions as being an effort to put things straight rather than causing mischief. 
contrary to what is really happening, and combining wrongdoing with belief that it is right. This is a greater offense than committing sin, whilst believing that it is indeed a sin. The one who does not that is better off, and there is more hope that he will return to the white path. So the one who does that... So this is greater offense than committing sin, whilst believing that it is indeed a sin. Contrary to what is really combining wrongdoing with the belief that it is right. That happens a lot. Defend their actions as being an effort to put things straight. You know, that's actually very important for right now. We have a lot of <sighs> global revolutions happening right now that actually have caused not too much reform, but have actually caused more mischief than reform. So one could argue that the Quran really does have a point here. Well, I mean the tafsir, right? Interesting. Very informative. 